Uh, so, Ronald, I, um, I know you have a history in the Panthers, but be, 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 let, let's start with the Panthers for a second. I have a theory. The Panthers' uh, uh, demise, there's a lot of reasons for their demise, but one of the, 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 one of the triggers to me uh, was the fact that they were doing the breakfast program, but what they would do when they do these chants, when they say, you know, you know, the black man, or did they you have these kids doing these chants, and when they were filmed, when they, when they had these little news articles or whatever about about the kids doing the chants, it almost like they were, um, uh, I want to say, uh, I guess the outside world would look like they were being brainwashed or whatever, having to say these things. But I have, I think that what really killed the Panthers, one of the things, of course was that you had these kids being indoctrinated at a young age about their own uh, blackness, their own power, and the whatever powers that be, it really sent them into a spin. They just could not stand the fact that young kids, seven, eight years old, were being indoctrinated uh, to their own power and to, and to even a political uh, a stance. Can you just comment on, on, my, on this belief of mine? Let me... I always tell people who, uh, who ask this that, to me, a key to understanding the Black Panther Party that's nationwide is to understand that there were, that, for instance, in, in New York, in Harlem, okay, um, Elders Cleaver came to New York in, if I remember right, it was either July or August of 1968. Mm. And um, he hooked up with some SNCC people, with some RAM people, uh, some people that were around, um, uh, the folks in Brooklyn, uh, Herman, uh, they can't think of his name now, uh, they had uh, got, uh, there were three of them, they'd gotten uh, jammed up on some political charges and their families put up their homes and then they skipped bail. And so it was a whole struggle in New York in 67, 68, 69 to save the homes, you know, with these brothers. Um, and so we came here in the summer of 68 and organized some folks um, around starting a uh, New York Panthers. The first office opened in Brooklyn. Um, if you look at who Huey Peter and Bobby Seale were in the West Coast, mm -hmm. and then you look at various branches and everything, um, there were inconsistencies from the very beginning. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember the uh, Harlem office. Okay, I joined in uh, December of 68. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, the Harlem office on, uh, on 7th Avenue was uh, the sign, the marquee sign was uh, red, black, and green. Mm -hmm. We sold Bahamut Speaks in the office. Mm -hmm. We sold um, the Daily World, you know, the, Com the Communist Party newspaper. Mm -hmm. uh, people had changed their names. People had African and uh, Arabic and Muslim names. Mm -hmm. People wore dashikis, you know. Uh, sisters wore uh, their African clothing, you know, wore galas and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, in the summer of 69, when after the uh, Panther 21 got arrested in New York, mm -hmm. um, and West Coast people came to reconstitute the chapters, I'll never forget coming out of, getting out of school. I was in high school, after, you know, dropped my books at home, coming to the office, came to the office, and they were out, the West Coast people were outside repainting the sign in the front from red, black, and green to the panther colors from the West Coast, which were uh, black on powder blue. Mm -hmm. They made people get rid of all the African clothing because, see, the West Coast, they were having that confrontation with us, with Karenga. Yeah, yeah. And so everything was a, 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 was, was a anti-cultural nationalist. Um, I, point, I point that out to say that one of the things that was tearing at the panther party from <laughs> It, the expansion out of the West Coast was the fact that you had radically different ideology. See, most of the people in New York were nationalists. You know, didn't uh, didn't like China that much. You know, didn't um, you know the word communism and Marxism? You know, threw people the wrong way and everything. Mm. Um, and so, the, in New York, there was always a struggle going on, the, the ideological struggle between, uh, you know, what Huey later, later called revolutionary nationalism, you know, and this uh, sort of nationalism that excluded whites. Mm -hmm. uh, so he had ideological things, Tara. I hear what you're saying about the uh, fact that the system couldn't deal with the with black children being uh, radicalized and everything, and I, th that's that's definitely a uh, part of it. But there were ideological I issues that they never they were always under the surface that never got resolved. So when uh, the so-called split came between. Um, Huey P. Newton, you know, the community service programs and the people who were talking about um, 
you know, uh, uh, armed guerrilla warfare and eventually evolved into uh, what I call the Black Liberation Army and everything. Folks on the East Coast, you know, folks in New York, folks in uh, 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 Newark, folks down in Baltimore were all prime for that because, I mean, you had Republic New Africa members, you know, down in Baltimore, for instance, that become, that is sort of forming the nucleus of the Baltimore Party. The same in Boston, you know, there was a big purge in Boston in uh, the summer of 69 because of um, a uh, brother by the name of uh, Chico Neblet was on um, the head of the Panthers there, and he was RNA. You know, he was a nationalist. Uh, so I don't think those issues ever got resolved. So I also think there was some, you know, some ideological issues that drove that drove people in the different directions. Well, you know, you're, um, I, I have to look in, into the, I guess, the social science field of this, because what people don't understand, uh, most people don't actually understand about the United States of North America, is that they are truly different states and more important that different regions That's right. the problem is not even the states they're different regions, regions. in fact uh, Brent from Marcella said this on a, I think a Bring on a Night a, a Sting film he said a brother from New Orleans may, may be talking to a brother say from Philadelphia and not even understand what he's saying that's right that's right and 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 so this even see when, when we go to these things about this nationalism whatever have you I think it's even more basic than that uh, but but I don't want to change your change your change your analysis uh, uh, like that. But in fact, let's go off on, on that. Could it? Uh, a lot of times, the powers that be, even some black folks, think that black people are a monolith. Right. Uh, and and it's never been that. Even even if we came here and we could, if you look at Africa, it's still 52 of I guess we're now the 54 different nations. <laughs> I don't know how many different cultures because even in the nations you have different you have, you have cultures. So we could never actually. I don't know if we can ever get together on a racial situation. We can maybe get together on a cultural situation. But just just speak to this schism. Um, I want to get to a more basic thing. I don't want to stay political about mm -hmm. this. You know what I mean? Just on a basic human thing. What could have brought everything? What can bring everything together? I, mean, I know I'm skipping now to the present. What can bring everything together? It can't just be your blackness. Because, like I said, this regional thing is, is a heavy thing. Because you have brothers that, that are gun people. You have brothers that are, you know, that are vegetarians, you know, or, you know, whatever, I mean. Well, you know, let me say this, you know, one of the, uh, when, when uh, let me answer your question by talking about the Panthers, which is a hot second. One of the things that the West Coast people brought to the East Coast that we had trouble getting, wrapping our heads around was that whole idea of, um, unity with the Communist Party and with whites, you know, around, you know, like, it's called the United Front, you know, um, the 1930s, you know, between World War and World War II, you know, the uh, guy in uh, Bulgaria, Dimitrov, developed this idea of the United Front, you know, where what it is is you could get people across class lines, across ethnic lines and everything, and organize them around a common, you know, goal, you know, in the case of, uh, you know, Central Europe in the 30s, you know, you know United Front against fascism, and so uh, the West Coast folks, in fact, they had a, um, a, of a, a national anti-fascist um, conference in uh, California in 69, it must have been, um, that had this um, coalition, the Panther Party, the Communist Party, and several other organizations. Out of that got formed an organization, the National Committee to Combat Fascism, NCCF, mm -hmm. which um, was basically the way that whites got to sort of be pseudo-Panthers without actually joining the Panther Party. Um, and I bring that up to say that over the years, I've come to appreciate the fact that I can get together with somebody on a single issue, and we don't have to agree down the line. Mm -hmm. You know, one, and I think that one of the mistakes that the left in this country, you know, across the board, has made is this idea that what it is is that in order for us to work together and be the same organization and call ourselves comrades, we have to agree on every single mm -hmm. issue, mm -hmm. and then it gets to be. You know, um, I said, why can't I get together with someone on the um, gun control issue, you know, and stop in the flow of uh, arms and everything into black communities? Why can't I get together with someone on that issue and ignore the fact that they may have an anti-gay agenda mm -hmm. or something like that? Because that has nothing to do with the issue that we're working on. Mm -hmm. Okay, because we want to get the guns out of the community. You know, we want to, uh, you know, community control the police. We want to, dis we want to overturn Graham versus Connor. We want to overturn the Supreme Court decision that basically exonerates a cop if he says that he acted out of fear for his life. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but this case was decided in the late 80s. You know, this is a pre Clarence Thomas court case, um, Graham versus Connor. Mm -hmm. That, um, just re re real quick, the background in case the cops jammed up a guy who was trying to get some, uh, trying to get some sugar into his system because he was getting ready to go. His diabetic was getting ready to go to insulin shock, oh, and I he ran. In, yeah, he ran into the convenience store. The line was too long. He ran out. The cop observed it. That is, that's like robbery behavior. Followed him, slapped the guy up, cuffed him, you know, roughed him up and everything. Then come to find out, you know, that he the store wasn't robbed. That they weren't fugitives. The car was registered. There's nothing wrong and everything. Thing and they, uh, you know, uncuffed him. They didn't, you know, uh, take him down at the station. He sued. Supreme Court ruled against him. Said that, you know, we uh, we can't second guess against the police. That they had to use the information they had at the time, but that their actions out of fear for their life, you know, basically exonerates and exculpates anything they may do. I think that one of the key things in dealing with this issue of. Um, the way that, uh, that the police deal with people of color in this country is to overturn uh, Graham versus Connor, you know, and to stop this idea that basically a cop has to throw you off the roof of the building, handcuffed, um, you know, and uh, whatever, in order for that to be something, you know, that he could be brought to trial for and then ultimately convicted. Why can't I get together on that issue with someone who doesn't share my agenda on other things, on uh, women's rights, on... Um, Know, on the LGBT community, yeah. on uh, any In other immigration issue. or whatever. Yeah, anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that one of the things that, 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 that thwart in our progress is the fact that we only want to, we think that the movement has to be everybody in one boat, all agreeing. And so someone white, for instance, says something that, um, you, know, I'm, you know, that I may think is a uh, 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 paternalistic or you know patronizing and I really want to exclude him from you know the fact that he's good in history and can really has something to teach with regard to white privilege you know or the relationship between the Second Amendment and uh, slavery and slave patrols or the relationship between the development of you know of urban police departments you know and control of slaves controls control the people of color you know in the late 18th early 19th century why can't I utilize him for that and then when it comes to the LGBT issue whatever else so to say well okay you go over there and, and you do that mm -hmm. and to get back to the Panthers I think that I think that that was one of the problems that all kinds of ideological class you know uh, the Panthers were really divided on the issue of how to deal with women you know um, because you had uh, brothers who like I'm serving the people that's your job to put out you know, serve you know, serve the people, so they serve me, so I can go out and serve the people, and then that's your role, you know. And then you had uh, brothers who were consistently on the issue, you know, you know strong on the issue of uh, uh, women's rights, that women, that no means no, you know, that it's the, the, the that's her body, and all that other kind of stuff, you know. Uh, you had men who were engaged in uh, pedophilia, but that's what you got to call it and everything, you know. And then you had men and women, you know, who were fighting against that, you know, so they were all, you know, they all kinds of different things going on and people pulled in different directions. Mm.